Hi, I'm David. Let me tell you about the research I do at the Center for Research in String Theory at Queen Mary University. How do we describe nature in physics? Our current understanding is based on two very different theories. First, we use Einstein's theory of general relativity, which describes the gravitational force, why things fall down. And second, there is quantum field theory, which describes the strong and electrolytic forces and various low energy phenomena. There are dedicated modules in our master's program where you can learn about these theories. But we clearly need a unified framework. And the problem is that attempts to unify general relativity with quantum field theory led to severe difficulties. Also, a unified theory would ideally explain cosmological observations such as the acceleration of the universe, dark matter, and cosmic inflation. Finding such a theory is a real challenge. So what do we do? The problems of unifying gravity with the other forces are the most severe under extreme conditions where space-time contains black holes. These fascinating objects can form when neutron stars collide or when stars collapse at the end of their lives. The gravitational effects in black holes are so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape from the region behind the event horizon. This is why they are called black. Things change if quantum effects are taken into account. In the 1970s, a fascinating connection between thermodynamics and gravity was found. Stephen Hawking showed that the total area of the event horizon of a black hole can never decrease. This law is remarkably similar to the second law of thermodynamics, which states that the total entropy of an isolated system cannot decrease. In fact, black holes behave like thermodynamic objects in many respects. Hawking also showed that quantum mechanical effects cause black holes to create and emit particles. This is called Hawking radiation. This also means that if nothing falls into them, black holes can, in fact, evaporate over time, although incredibly slowly. Hawking pointed out that there is a conflict between three fundamental principles of physics, namely unitarity, causality, and the equivalence principle of general relativity. When a black hole evaporates, the information contained inside the black hole seems to disappear from our universe. This contradicts unitarity, which is a basic ingredient of quantum mechanics, and which says that information is preserved. This puzzle is usually called the black hole information paradox. Now, is the information preserved or not? And if it is preserved, how does it get out of the black hole by the Hawking radiation process? I would like to find the answer to these questions. How does one approach the problem? In the past few years, it has become clear that gravity and quantum physics are not incompatible. On the contrary, they are intimately connected. The emergence of space-time is thought to be related to the quantum entanglement of degrees of freedom in a dual quantum system. Okay, so what does this mean? Imagine you have a bunch of hard disks. How much information can you store in them? Obviously, it scales linearly with the number of disks. Ordinary matter behaves this way. Its entropy scales with the volume. A very interesting feature of black hole physics is that the entropy of a black hole does not scale with the volume, it scales with the area of the event horizon. Based on this observation, Toft and Susskind proposed the holographic principle, which says that one should be able to de describe the gravitational physics in a volume of space by a dual theory defined on the boundary of the region. The most powerful concrete example for such a duality came from string theory in 1997. This is the antidecitor conformal field theory, or ADS-CFT, correspondence. It states that string theory in a five-dimensional asymptotically ADS spacetime is exactly equivalent to a four-dimensional quantum field theory. The string theory side of the duality contains gravity, whereas the quantum field theory side lives on a fixed background and there is no gravity there. So in this ADS-CFT duality, dynamical gravity and space-time are emergent phenomena. Can we use this holographic correspondence 
for the black hole information paradox? Yes, you can. You can put a black hole in an asymptotically ADS spacetime and you can let it decay by Hawking radiation. The ADS CFT correspondence states that time evolution in the gravitational theory is exactly equivalent to time evolution in the dual quantum field theory. Since the latter is unitary, the evaporation process must also be unitary. This argument convinced many people in the field, including Hawking himself, that information is preserved and that there is no information paradox. At the present time, the nature of the emergence of space-time and gravity is still not fully understood, and we do not understand precisely how information escapes from the black hole. My current research focuses on these problems. Another interesting and related topic is quantum chaos. Quantum chaos has played an important role in our understanding of quantum gravity and quantum field theory. One way to analyze chaos is through so-called out-of-time order correlation functions. These initially grew at an exponential rate characterized by a Yakunov exponent. Recently, a short bound has been discovered. The Yakunov exponent cannot be arbitrarily large. This bound is saturated by black holes in ADS-CFT. Somehow black holes scramble information very quickly. In some sense, they are the fastest computers in nature. The reason for this is still not understood. You can investigate these and several other problems in the master's program. If you have any questions or you would like to know more, please email me.